Hello everybody, my name is Sirk and welcome back to another episode of Creativerse. We got a new update. Uh, we are now playing an R36, which is, apparently is the U update. Uh, we have a new title screen here with uh, all of our stuff. We got our character here and uh, they actually added settings to the main menu, which is pretty nice. Uh, before you had to actually join a world to change video and audio settings, uh, which was kind of annoying. And yeah, looks really nice. Got some new stuff on here, but let's uh, let's hop into the world. So the reason this is called the U update is because they took a poll of uh, Creativeverse players to see what uh, new blocks we wanted slopes, slabs, and stairs made out of. And uh, these are what we got <laughs> right here. Uh, we got dirt slabs, grass, Blue, uh, yellow, red, adobe, uh, regular adobe, uh, bedrock, glass, limestone, and peak stone. Uh, there, I'll, I'll get into my thoughts about that in a sec. But first, let's unlock all of these. So, I got a bunch of slabs and slopes made up of all of these. I don't know why I'm right-clicking on all of them. Let's just hit FF, collect these all. And then we should be able to go and unlock everything. So unlock the peak stone. Unlocked. And let's craft four since we can right now. Uh, we can unlock the blue adobe. And craft four of those. The red adobe. Craft four of those. And there we go. We got all of our blocks. So now we should have slabs, slopes, and stairs of all of them. I'm going to go place them down. I think it's nighttime right now, so I'll go sleep. Place them down, we can take a look at them. All right, so here are all the slabs, slopes, and stairs that we got in this new update, and they're all right. <laughs> I'm not super thrilled with the uh, selection. Um, not necessarily, like I don't, I like the ones that we got, but I wish we would have gotten better ones. Uh, like this peak stone slope and the, the limestone slope, I actually really like. I like how they did those, especially with those lines in there. That might be an interesting roof. Um, the adobe bricks and or the adobe blocks might be kind of nice for uh, some sort of like deserty build. Uh, I think that would be kind of cool. But uh, for the most part, not overly thrilled, especially with glass. Who chose glass? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not a big fan of the glass in this game, uh, mainly because it's just so transparent. It's like, why even have a block there at all? You can't see anything. Um, when I use glass, I usually use the iron rod glass what is that called uh this one right here the reinforced glass just because it actually has substance to it like i'm not a big fan of all the lines in it but um when you go to something like this there's just nothing there uh, and to add slopes and slabs and stairs of it doesn't entirely make sense to me because you can't see it anyways so i don't really care what shape it is <laughs> Like if I was to build something out of this, like from far away, you just, you can't even see it. You know, if you look at this quickly or from like here, you can't even tell that there's something over there. Uh, so I'm not super thrilled with that. Uh, also, all of these blocks are very earthy. Um, and so basically the way I see using them, like the grass and dirt and like these peak stone blocks um, is basically for like terraforming if you just want to make your your ground look <laughs> a little bit better uh, have a little bit more gradualness to it instead of just going up a full block um, and with these you know they're more earthy blocks that I haven't really built with a whole lot yet maybe I will in the future but right now uh, that's definitely not uh, something that I use a whole lot what I would have liked to see is uh, some different wood slabs like the, uh, the wood gravel wall, this is honestly my favorite wood texture. I wish the normal wood actually looked like this. I'm not a huge fan of the gravel in there, but uh, that texture is probably my favorite wood texture. Um, and then this wood, the weathered wood, is actually pretty nice as well. Uh, so these two I would have definitely liked to see uh, in slabs or slopes. If we had gotten those, I would have went around, went around and replaced all of my uh, little pads and everything, basically everything that uses wood stairs and slabs, I would have replaced with those. Uh, I would have been a lot more excited for that. But it is what it is. Hopefully we'll get something like that in the future. For now, this is what we got, and uh, this is what we get to play with. 
They also added clouds in this update, which does make the uh, the sky a bit more interesting. Add some stuff to it. Uh, they're animated, so they are moving around a little bit. They don't uh, just move in one direction, which um, I don't know if that makes it unrealistic or more interesting, honestly. Uh, you know, they kind of move. It's almost like there's different layers to the clouds, I guess, if you look at it. You know, like you can see some clouds, they're very slowly moving that way. But then you have these closer clouds that are almost moving that way. So there's different jet streams or something. I don't know. Uh, they also added uh, some different uh, block picking up and placing down animations. There's a little like blue uh, sparkles <laughs> and some new attack animations. So, wow, yeah, he like explodes into sparks and fireworks when he gets attacked or when he gets hit. Very weird. Hmm. And then it seems like the smoke is a little bit different too. There's a lot more smoke when they die. Uh, anyways, I think that's about it for the changes. Uh, there's a few other updates, improvements. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. We covered the big stuff. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to continue on with a little bit of the wiring stuff. We're not going to do a whole lot, um, at least not on camera. The main thing I want to do is I want to use some of these things that I figured out and incorporate them into our haunted house. That was one thing that I had uh, an idea for when I started working on that was uh, we could maybe make it look a little spookier if we uh, if we animate some stuff using this wiring. So that is what we're gonna go work on right now. I think I finally got this figured out. Uh, this is taking way too long. Look at all those wires. Uh, so yeah, this has taken like several hours to figure out. Just a very simple little animation of the doors and lights. It's not even probably gonna be that impressive. Uh, but yeah, I went through like a few different ideas and uh, it just kind of stumped me and I couldn't figure out how to move forward with these things and uh, sometimes these things just I don't quite understand them uh, like sometimes the animations don't quite work uh, and sometimes the the things don't update correctly um, and so it, when you're trying to like bug fix it and certain parts aren't like working correctly like they should be uh, it just makes it harder like I had one of these or I had uh, I had something that wasn't updating whenever it was getting triggered for some reason I couldn't figure out why um, I think I just had to like pick it up and put it back down but since it wasn't updating like I couldn't figure out why other things weren't working um, and then sometimes while I'm trying to just sit here and bug fix it like one of these things will just like they have little animations when they get activated and every once in a while the animations will just go all the time and so it's just like distracting and frustrating but i think i have something worked out here uh hopefully it works uh so what we have going on is a clock here this is a 40 second clock so each of these clocks is 10 seconds which means it goes on for uh 20 seconds and then turns off for 20 seconds. Uh, so 40 seconds all the way around. And then um, this is one idea that like, I don't know why I didn't just do this uh, sooner. I was trying to do something with a bit counter uh, cause I wanted like four different stages or four different things to turn on um, and only four different things. And so I used a bit counter at first with like a clock that ran so that it would go four bits um before it stopped or it was i didn't even, it's hard to explain i was very confused it wasn't working uh, i was having trouble getting it to do exactly what i wanted but instead i went to this where uh, we have four different delays and so um each delay we can set its own the uh each delay to its own timing which means i can change how long each phase is which is actually kind of nice um, and yeah, once it gets done with one delay, it will start that phase, go to that thing, and then activate that event, I guess. And then it will go to the next delay, which it will wait a little bit, and then it will activate the next event. And then uh, we have four different events here going on. Hello. Um, so the first event uh, should 
open all the doors. That's what this T or this flip flop gate does. It goes to doors, um, and then after that, it goes to the second event, which uh, flickers lights. Uh, so these right here, this goes to lights. Um, and this thing is a little fast clock that should flicker the lights and this just um, Turns that clock on for a certain amount of time. This is just a little pulse pulser um, uh, Which by the way before last episode I did a pulser with a delay delay gate and a No a delay gate and a logic gate this time. I'm doing a number comparison gate set to less than and the uh, the reason I did that is with the logic gate, um, it would send a pulse whenever you turned on a signal signal to it and then turn the signal off. Uh, whereas this with the comparison gate, it only sends a pulse when you turn it on. So that works a little bit better, at least for this instance. Um, if you're using like a lever and you want to turn a lever into a button, then it's kind of nice if it sends a pulse when you turn it on and off. Because then every time you flick the switch, it sends a pulse. But anyways, uh, so that does that. And then this turns the lights off for um, five seconds. Uh, so that this is just another pulser. Uh, sends a five-second pulse. And then one of the biggest problems that I've had and had to kind of learn how to use these is how you connect things. Uh, you know, in some of these cases, you have to have... Um, you have to have inverters kind of as a as a uh, in your intermediate step uh, between two things because otherwise the connections will just be weird uh, like for example this one this is connected to there and there uh, and then the this like gets connected to lights now if I connected uh, this thing over to this one in fact, we could show that right now. If I took that one off, connected this to here, um, it breaks this connection. Uh, and if I if I actually break that one, let's see, send that to there. What is this doing? <laughs> and then send this one to there. Then it also, let me kill this guy. Oh, come on. Let me grab the things. All right. Uh, then it also connects to this one because this one is connected to that and that, which means that if that one's connected to that, it also needs to be connected to that, which is why you need to put uh, these inverters as separate steps. Uh, it's very, it's kind of annoying, uh, but it just has to do with the fact, like when you go here, everything has like an input uh, variable and an output variable or event name input event name and an output event name um, and so when you connect that it just it matches the event names and so it connects this one as well uh, which is why we have to have all these intermediate steps it's what most of these inverters are for is just to uh, kind of fix that problem one last thing, uh, to connect all the doors and the lights, what I did, instead of running back and forth connecting these by hand, uh, all I did was I named this to doors and I named this one to lights. So then when I go up to all the doors and lights, something's coming to attack us. Uh, get out of here, shoot, oh shoot. <laughs> these guys have not been nice to me. I've been trying to keep a door between me and them. Anyways, when we go up here, I can just go to a light and name it lights. And I can go to a door and name it door and then that will uh, connect it. So, enough mumbo jumbo. <laughs> that was a lot of talking. We need to just show, time to show. So, F, open that up. I've been very wary of right clicking. Uh, because, well, first off, when you're standing on top of these things, it happens with, like, the uh, the touchstone, too. When you're standing on top of them, it likes to interact with the thing below you instead of what you're looking at. Even if, you sh if you're looking at it. Like, if I sit here and right-click on this, it's possible that it won't actually right-click on that. 
Uh, sometimes it will try and place something on there instead of activating the light switch. So I try and always just hit F uh, to turn on the switch. I keep saying a light switch, but it's just a switch. Also doors, they changed the hitbox on doors. So that's just right in the middle. You can see it's right there, not there. It makes it kind of annoying to open doors. I hope that they fix that and change it back. Uh, it kind of, I, I think they did it so that when it, the doors are open, you can kind of click through them, whereas before you couldn't. But this hitbox is just way too small for the doors. Uh, so right now, yep, there we go. The lights are flickering. The doors open, the lights are flickering. Now the doors are going to close. And then the lights will turn off and it'll get all dark. Why is that door all bright? It's kind of weird. Oh, it's daytime right now. All right, I changed it to nighttime so that hopefully we could see things activating a little bit more. So those doors just closed and the lights turned off. Uh, so now the lights will turn on and it will take a little bit for everything to run. Uh, Cause I didn't want it to just run continuously. I wanted the events to happen kind of every once in a while. Uh, it'd be nice if I could actually make it random, but I don't know how to make a random number generator with logic. Uh, I don't even know if there is, I mean, there's gotta be some way cause computers, I, I don't know how computers <laughs> do random numbers. So there's the lights flickering. Ooh, and then the doors close. I really, I also wish that the doors would open the same way instead of opposite. Uh, so yeah, th there we go. It's it's honestly not as haunted as I had hoped. <laughs> uh, yeah, it 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 works. If I played around with it, now that I have the system in place, I could probably tweak it and add events or change events that happen to make it a little bit better. Um, but this this is what I have now. I've spent so much time on it. I, I don't think I'm going to worry about it now. It was just kind of a proof of concept type of thing to check it out and a way to incorporate all of these. Uh, by the way, let's hide all these connections. Just a way to incorporate all of uh, this wiring stuff. But that is going to be it for today. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed. If you don't like the wiring stuff, or even if you do like the wiring stuff and you think I'm an idiot for because uh, I couldn't figure this out, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Well, I think we'll get back to building next episode. Uh, I don't really plan on playing around with this wiring stuff too much. Uh, I want to get back to my house and start working on uh, um, some pens for all of my pets. But anyways, hope you have enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, peoples.